Hi guys, welcome today. It's been so much time since I uh, streamed the last time and I was a little bit nervous how it goes and I had to set up my environment here. I hope you can hear me. I set up everything. Please write someone that you can hear me so I know everything's working. You know, in the past I was streaming a lot of about JavaScript and, and um, a functional JavaScript and ECMAScript 6 and all these. Oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, and today <laughs> I, made, I made a little um, Twitter pool and I asked for people like, if they want to hear more about functional JavaScript or about Lodash FP I was uh, playing with the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the past and I really like that one. But everybody wants a, wants a reason ML video, so I'm going to do that. I've been working with Elm. I was working with uh, JavaScript. But to be honest, I was only playing with Reason. And uh, that's why I wanted to start with that. I have never written a page in Reason ML. Uh, although, full disclosure, I did look at the syntax a bit and I was playing it in my terminal, but nothing more than that. Uh, let's, jump, let's jump right in. Um, so, Reason is a functional language. I hope you, many of you know that uh, there's this complex environment and a complex setup how things go. So you write in Reason, which is in fact a special syntax for uh, OCaml, and then that thing gets transpiled to JavaScript, and that's what we that's what we run in the browser. Uh, it works. That's what I was told. Uh, that's what I've been told, and it it feels pretty cool. Uh, this is the main web page. And uh, what, I, what I looked into was the documentation. Uh, there is this, uh, sorry, uh, I think it was quick start or was it converting from JS? Oh, this uh, cheat sheet. This shows how things you would write in, in JavaScript would be written in a reason. That's what I went through. I, I kind of got things. Let's go through that quickly so we know what's happening. So in reason, you only have let, uh, no const, no wars, anything like that. Let is kind of immutable binding, so it works very similar to const. That's why it's written like here. There is a way, which I haven't tried, how you can work with these uh, 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 variables as mutable ones. I, I would like to see that how it actually works. Uh, yeah, strings, you have only double quotes and single quotes are for single characters you append with double plus i will have to remember that uh true false the same yeah these things are kind of the same also almost the same nothing different here arrays are different so in arrays you have to write um, uh, these pipes operators uh and for objects which i think oh yeah objects are the same right it's actually cool Functions are basically like must script uh, fed arrow functions. That's that's what we've been using. I don't see much difference. Oh yeah, there's one thing, and that is that in in reason everything is an expression, so you don't have to write written statements and things like that. The last expression is returned. Yeah, I will be looking into this a lot, so I will have that open. What I found next was this uh, awesome reason ML list and i was looking through that because i was like oh what, what am i going to do today what do, what do i want to do and i went through this list i look into that and i said okay there were some tutorials and i i briefly look into them and where's that and uh i wasn't sure what to what to try but then i saw this one a first reason react app for javascript developers and that seems something like a good start uh i didn't read this I don't know what's, what's coming to us. I would like to somehow follow that and see where it takes us. Uh, I don't want to make this much long. Uh, I think it will be for one hour. I will try things. I will try to set things up, get some feel about reason, hopefully get somewhere, uh, have some application running. Let's, let's try something. Uh, just to compare, uh, a year ago or two years ago, oh man, time flies. Two years ago, when I was starting with Elm, uh, I created this hangman in Elm. It took me a few hours to create. It was the very first 
time I was working on that. I will just quickly show what I did. And that's what I want to do eventually uh, after some time. Uh, so I would like to learn Reason and then I would like to redo my Hangman in, in Reason. And just to know what, what I want to do. Uh, the Hangman, right? You have a word and you have to guess it. So you write, you have uh, remaining attempts. Yeah, that wasn't that. That wasn't either whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. I, I don't know. Oh, what? What is that? Blah. Plates. Those plates. Yeah, I'm not good at it. It takes words from an API. It turns it into this game. It uh, measures uh, how many times you miss and all of these. This is what I would like to eventually get. But first, let's start with this one. Um, and thanks, James Friend. Nice name, by, guy. And he wrote a nice uh, tutorial. So let's go through that and we will see uh, how it goes. Uh, yeah, so we have some uh, React packages. I, I did, I have that. And what we want is we want to start with a, with a yarn project. So I will, I will do that. I don't know what's coming next to us and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So let's try that. Uh, let's create a new project. Uh, I just copied that it's reason rep repo list. Not sure where it is. Uh, this will probably take some time, of course. Yeah, npm install. Oh, it was fast. Uh, let's go for that, and then you can just start yarn start, and we would be we should be able to see this page. Yeah, that's not a big surprise there. Dependencies, dependencies, dependencies. In it. Yeah. Okay, let's read more. I don't know. Uh, we have this React DOM RE. I, I would say that RE is for for reasoning. Uh, render element to ID. Uh, render element with sorry. Render to element with ID. Yeah, that's, that's very similar to what we have in JavaScript. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's cool. Oh yeah, and JSX is kind of built in in Reason. That's that's another great thing. Uh, I. I have a feeling that reason is what JavaScript would be like if it was written from scratch now. I mean, yeah, sure, there was OCaml and these people just made it so it works well with, uh, with JavaScript developers. So it's easy for them to learn. So reason is kind of this syntax people have uh, created for JavaScript developers. So we, we should be kind of fast to learn that. Right, we have this nice, uh, package we have a source oh cool we have some public files yeah some more modules let's, let's let's not look there interesting interesting okay okay let's 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 first make sure it works uh yarn start okay it opened my my other window Let's go here and yeah, console writes a lot of things. But yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, that's it. It's running. <laughs> Done. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. I, I like that. Uh, now I would like to see the code itself. And this will be the first time I will be seeing uh, Reason React code. Oh dear. Okay. That sure is different than I expected and it's somehow long. Uh, you have require index some, something raw and some module in the sync register service worker. It uh, doesn't seem very important. And then you have uh, react DOM RE render to element with ID. That's what we saw there. You have this app. Render it to root and you register service worker. Oh, okay, interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, what I understood, and again, uh, I think I read it somewhere, I don't know where. And, and if you have that knowledge, I would be so confused. 
is that you have this app variable which you render but it but it's not defined anywhere right it's it's nowhere like here so it is actually content of this of this file called app re in reason i understood again you don't write imports i mean you have this one but it's probably special because it's css and this one because it's a uh, image and yeah, it makes sense but otherwise you don't write imports just use the things and this is the file name right here uh i'm not sure if i will be able to get used to it but that's that's how things go uh let's let's go through this very quickly uh okay we have let component reason react stateless component app okay so this is the name we see here but i, I i'm pretty sure that's not the name you import that's not the, mm, this name is not by right, this one this is something else just some naming i would assume and then what you do you have this make function um which when i look at it, it's some function right but okay so make seems to be like the default export of this of this file uh that's certainly very interesting and you spread a component or i don't know how it's called in the reason uh world and then you have a render function okay so yeah yeah okay let's let me go through that and then then you have a just normal jsx that seems pretty standard so let's see what they have to write about that um yeah we did that okay yeah oh yeah uh they say uh, replace this we can do that that's basically the same they just want to write things yeah and yeah that is, they say it's basically just just writing component yeah we figure that out uh okay let me copy that and oh i save and i want to see if oh it got immediately compiled like that as i'm um, hot, re hot reloading right in there but there's a problem uh okay i'm not sure if i like these messages we found a bug for you oh interesting it's because we passed the message right but we don't use it that is that is that is cool oh that's why i like strongly type languages i mean this is an error you wouldn't be able to catch otherwise so if i remove this and save uh oh yeah it works very cool very cool let me close this um yeah nothing interesting they are probably discussing that error i see that record type yeah um uh, i'm not sure if you if you know uh flow i've been working with flow for a while flow itself by the way written in in reason and that's why i think this will be easier for me because uh this is exactly how uh, flow types works right and uh, the same goes with the reason and all the other things so that should be cool uh okay let's create a new file called repo data oh by the way uh, i'm not sure what we're doing but it seems something with the repositories we'll see uh that's another important thing that's just i mean we will see how it goes i want to quickly see cool things uh new file repo data re and paste type yeah that's there we have it uh that's another interesting thing uh i mean i'm, I'm still not sure i'm still not sure how, how this uh make function should work it's still a little bit hidden for me okay uh oh yeah files are modules that's what i read yeah and oh yeah data dot repo this is the type you can just access it with a dot that's cool and we can we'll try to use this in app.re uh yeah so we will create a new component uh an item okay um no nah, okay so this is a new app so i will take it and i will replace what we have here in app 
let me close that so um Oh, by the way, as you saw, I, I, I installed uh, a formatter in my editor, so it always formats my data. I love Prettier and I couldn't live without that. Uh, so if a language doesn't have a formatter, I'm not sure if I would be able to use it. Uh, let me go through it and see if we have that. So we have the render function. Uh, yeah, this underscore self uh, is a common thing in, I want to say functional languages, but it's, I would say it's main languages in general. So when you don't need that, you append the underscore, but uh, the compiler knows that you haven't forgotten about that. That's actually cool. I like that, if it works like that. Uh, we created this dummy repo. Oh, yeah, 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 I see that. Okay, and this uh, repo data repo. That's this one. I don't know if these underscores are a common thing in reason. I don't like that. I'm so much used to camel case. But we have that uh, status count. Yeah, we have some, just some, yeah, okay, d dummy repo. Okay, I see that, some dummy data. And then what we do, we want to use this. I mean, we obviously don't have this component, so it will be complaining about that. Of course it is because we don't have that. That's just still cool. Uh, this is interesting, I, I didn't see that before. React, uh, reason react string to element, so that means uh you have to use this function to actually render a text uh that's not new to me in in elm there's text uh, element for that and uh, i think it's, it's pretty cool i think that the the hack we have a normal react that means you can just write uh strings into nodes and they will be magically uh rendered is as i said it's a hack and it's not a good practice this is just more, much more verbose and uh, explicit, and I like that. That's really cool. It's it's a little bit long though. I could be shorter, but we'll see. Maybe there are ways around that. I I don't want to write this every time I write a, write a string. On the other hand, you always almost never write a string, right? You you maybe translate things. So, hmm, hmm. okay. Where was I? Yeah, sorry. Uh, that what we have. I think just think. Uh, render function is wrapped in braces. Uh, oh yeah, we saw that. So yeah, it's as ECMAScript six thing, and then yeah, return values are anything. The last thing you write there. Uh oh, there's this empty bracket which is called unit. Yeah, I saw that in other languages too. Hmm. That's again very explicit. I like that. Uh, defining components in reason react. Uh, of course, yeah, we have that error. We know about that because we don't have the repo item. So we have to create a new file, of course, repo item. I'm, I'm not sure how this uh, resolving names works. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I know how it works, but I'm not sure if I like it. So I, I, I write a file. I just put the content into it. What is this? Oh yes, interesting, very interesting, very interesting. Um, so what we do here is that we receive an argument with the name repo, which is format of repo data, repo. We receive children, which we don't use, that's why we have the underscore. And then in the render, we just create a div with repo.fullName. So full name comes from this Thing. And then this cool thing is, I'm, I'm, I don't know how it's called, it's super cool. Uh, where is that? Yeah, that's how you, if you pass a prop, this combo is kind of a prop, right? But here, if you want to have a name for that, you have to import it with this, uh, with, uh, how is it called? Tilda, tilda, yes. Hmm, interesting. Uh, how does it work now? Oh, yeah, we have that, it's there. I really like that. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, labeled arguments. I, I think I, I, I heard about them already, and it's really cool. So that means it's not about the order because the order doesn't matter. I mean, I don't want to check it now, but I, I'm pretty sure that if you have multiple of those, you can switch the order. So it's like kind of the structuring, but it's much better and it's type safe, and you always have to write all the arguments as we saw before. So that's again uh, very, very useful. Oh, yeah, they write about the make. Each rec component 
defines a function called make, which defines props and check The props are specified as labeled arguments. Cool. This make function returns a record. First thing is because typically component where component is reduced to component or stateless component. Oh, okay. I know what is a stateless component and reduced to component. Okay, it's something that has a state. Okay. Uh, it's weird. Yeah, of course it is weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I have. I like that. And you can have some like cycle methods. Not interesting. Let me see something interesting. We've, okay, yeah, that that seems to be like what we need. So this is the repo. We received the repo. We want to change the the render function. So I'm replacing this render function with this thing, saving. Oh, I love that. Formatting is so cool. Uh, repo item. Oh yeah. Uh, so first thing I see, and I do really like that, is that you don't have to write uh, curly braces as you would in in JavaScript, that is that is super cool. You still have the class name. You have to re keep remembering that. Uh, I'm I'm not sure why this is in brackets. Do I need that, or is it just a formatting? Okay, there's. It's actually needed. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, we have to read about that. This is the concatenation of the strings. Again, very explicit time conversion string to int. We have it there. A oh, string. What is that? String of int. Yeah, of course. Integer to string. Okay. Interesting naming. And we get accounts. Okay, let's see how it works. We have that, and this is a link. Oh uh, yeah, it's a link. Uh, right now, I'm, I would say it's kind of clear. Everything seems to be okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, let's try this thing. I, I, I have a. Oh, okay, not here. <laughs> that, that won't work. But here I can uh, see React. Oh, yeah, and, and and the application is there, so I can go through that. And it has all the names. I see the divs. I can inspect that. That is that's actually cool. I can see the children that are passed that have some really weird thing. I mean, weird. It's different, and the same. We have these reason props. That's also interesting. Hmm. That is very new. That is new. That is different. I like that. Oh, I get it. This is the name we write there, right? So this is the name we write. So it's like a repo item detail. When I save that and reload that, it should reload, right? Come on. Okay. Now I'm confused. I'm still, I still don't know what this thing is used for then. Um, okay, yeah, we've been there. We have to use this string to element. Okay, I like that. Uh, that's equivalent in the JavaScript. We get that. Uh, we get some errors. We didn't get an error. Okay. Well, is it? Is it something else? Uh, oh, oh, so. Uh, Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I was a bit confused. Stateful React components. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm really interested about that. I really like uh, Elm architecture, and that was something I. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed, and that's what I learned a lot, and it gave me a lot of information, and I've been working on that for like since. So, uh, that for me is the best way how to do things and uh to be honest i don't remember how it's done with reason i never heard about that uh that's interesting i mean i mean in, in normal javascript we usually use uh redux which again i think was directly inspired by by alm architecture hmm, okay uh so we will see. I mean, I, I hope this is covered in this tutorial. Okay. Uh, what? Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I have I have two windows open and it's confusing. Sorry, my bad. 
So we are here and we have a stateful React component. Okay. Uh, we will have a. Okay, I'm, I don't like uh, state in uh, normal React components, but let's go with that and see how that works in here. So we have a new. Okay, in app.re. We change that. Okay, I will. I will. Let me just uh, copy that out and investigate. So in app re, I'm replacing all this with this. Saving. Okay. Um, I that's an error here, but okay. Let's let's first read that. We will see. So we create something called state. That's always a type state. Which is a repo data, repo data dot repo, okay. And components reduce the component, not sure, yeah, as we said, something with state. Let dummy repo repo data, that's the the dummy one. We just move it here. We we had it here, right? No, where was that? I'm getting confused already. That's kind of fast. Oh, okay, so we didn't we didn't have it there. Uh we had it here. Okay, initial state, interesting, is the dummy repo. And then renders, oh, oh yes. Now you use the self, which we didn't use, for example, in this one as underscore, but here we use it. We can access the state and we can access the repo data. Hmm, hmm. Okay, but for some reason, this is failing. Um, is this still like, okay? What? It should have been connected. What, what happened? Uh, there seems to be a reason React reduced component. We don't have all the type in for for this action. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll see. We copied things from here. Um, yeah, let's say that we have to remove the underscore. The state must the state type must be defined before the call or you'll get an error saying something like type constructor state would escape its scope. We don't get that. We get an error error. I mean, should I remove this? Okay, let me let me just remove that. I'm not sure if it's needed. We didn't use those, so maybe it was not needed. Fail to compile. <laughs> okay. Debugging, that's kind of soon. That's kind of too soon for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I copied everything that's here. Could this be for some other React version or Reason version or whatever, some combination of those? Uh, I do define the state. I mean, this is this is kind of magical, right? You just define a property and, and this thing uses that. That's, uh, yeah, magical. And when I said it, this language is very expressive, this is not a part of that. This works. Uh, okay, I guess I will have to go to the documentation and see what they say about. Uh, okay, maybe not here. Uh, we have to go here and we have the. <laughs> Where is the reason to read documentation, right? Um, yeah, uh, Martin, well, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, from the error message, you're missing reducer. Okay. Define reducer. Huh. Okay. That is true. Uh, it says reducer component, right? Where is the documentation? Here. Okay. Uh, no? Yeah. Uh, let me. Reduce the component. Mm, I assume we have some actions. Okay, components, and then the reducer. Okay, I see. Okay, uh, maybe we should go back to the to the tutorial. It will be there, I guess, because uh, it's too much. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't. They wouldn't skip over that. And yeah, I see pattern matching. So that's probably it. Um, Taped, yeah. Um, 
we can change our state type to represent it like so uh, type state report the option option is a maybe type yeah i see that okay mm, so in, Java, in javascript you have null or undefined and we have a discussion what to use when uh in an other language use like elm and this one you don't have that and you have this uh maybe monad which is very cool once you get through some uh, i mean it, it's a it's a mind switch but i really like that and i think i discovered that in elm actually okay now it's called option so it's either some or none i don't know yeah that's it some or none i like that so i guess we have to change that do that we change that uh we say that the initial state is different save oh for my thing is less uh yeah nothing interesting some or null yeah do you guys know the, the maybe mod out um Yeah, let's see what the, what the type checker says. I think, oh yeah, it's just it's the thing that he said. Oh yeah, we have the same error message. So it means we are on the right track, I assume. Uh, oh yeah, sure, because we are directly uh, accessing that and we are going to switch between none and some. So what we do is that we do this thing. I like that. Let me copy that. I want to paste things again. There's the, there's the render function. Oh, I have to, sorry. I have to copy it with with the sort of brackets around paste save oh no nothing's wrong ah uh, no why is there a comma maybe i need the comma i think um on line 21 Consider adding a semicolon. What? Uh, this is the same thing. It doesn't say anything. Um. Otherwise, it seems to be pretty straightforward, right? You get the self. Oh, I, I see that. Something's wrong here. Why doesn't it... Uh... <laughs> this is there, but this thing is picked with... Oh, oh, okay. It's missing... Uh... Curry brackets. Safe. Oh, man. They have a mistake there. Cool. So let's go for that. Oh. And now it's removed. Okay, so it doesn't, it's not supposed to be there. This thing is whatever. Uh, it's missing. Let's go through that. Uh, this is kind of, I would say, easy to understand. Uh, we have a new variable called a repo item, and what we do is that we look into this maybe, and if there is something, we return the repo item with that, and if not, we say uh, we put a string saying loading. And then we directly use it here. Okay, uh, let me save that and let's go to the app. We have some errors again. It's still the reducer function. Okay, I guess we will we will get there later. Reducer components. That's it. Uh, so why is the state of component? Yeah, interesting. Uh, so instead of doing on click and set state. We do reduce, okay, with an action. So that that seems like a uh, like a Redux, but inside that component, uh, yeah, okay, let's see that. So we have to have these actions, uh, action type. That's very similar to what what uh, Elm has. Okay, uh, a syntax error. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, okay. Possible <laughs> that uh, is okay. Something, something's wrong with this. Oh, oh, it actually has a semicolon here, and I 
have to uh, interesting that's what i'm not sure about i mean uh i didn't write semicolons i, I stopped using that two i don't know maybe three years ago i stopped writing semicolons and i kind of like my javascript without that surprising that you have to have it here but yeah with this nice uh, error message is kind of understandable. Okay, and then what we do, we actually finally introduce this reducer function where we react uh, to this action. So let's let's look into that. You can have a, an action called loaded with parameter repo data dot repo. So I mean, uh, for those who are not familiar with this, this is something called a union type. Again, it is in Elm. It is in other languages. It just says that action can like. It's a type action which can be multiple, I don't know how it's called, like verbs, and they can have options. But this is like a, a wrap data, like a package which has name loaded, and then you know what is argument of that. And that's what we use here, right? In the in the destructuring. So yeah, I mean I mean this is pretty cool. Union types are, are so great. It's like enums, but but much better, much better, and I think yeah. Let's not go much into that. We do the switch statement. Okay, uh, sorry. Again, let's go for the beginning. We have reducer, and again, it seems to be like a reducer in uh, Redux. However, here the action is first and the state is second. I'm not sure if it has to be like that or if you can use this uh, that cool thing with how is it called? I don't remember the name. Listed arguments. Annotated arguments, stuff like that. But I mean, whatever, right? We only need the action. So we use that action. But yeah, if it, if it was there, you would have to write it, I assume. So action is first here. That's, that again needs some uh, remembering. You switch on that, you have loaded. You see if, if, the, if, if the action is loaded and it has loaded repo, you run this function reason react.update repo data some load repos. This seems to be uh, very similar to that uh, that state function, this update. It kind of feels magical that running this thing in middle of reducer does something. I, I was used to that reducers return the new values and then, then this would be a little bit different. But okay, so you just run reason react update. I mean, these names are kind of long and you can see my editor is not very like uh, ready for that. Maybe I would be able to change the line size, but let's not go with that now. Um, yeah, what we have here, uh, returning. Oh, it's a returning reason react update. Oh, that's, that means that it's actually Kind of an action, a task that's surprising at least. Uh, and we can start with none data. Yeah, okay, we have that. That's very, that's very nice. So the initial state is actually none, and that's kind of true, right? We don't have anything. And we go there. Uh, let's see the app. We have the app. It says recent project and loading. Uh, by the way, I removed the style, so uh, it's ugly now. Not that much. Okay, uh, and we will introduce a button and the button will load the data we have stored there. It can make a little bit longish, right? So we have a uh, load repos button. By the way, <laughs> when I introduce a, a new line, formator on save removes that. That doesn't help much. Uh, we can display this uh, button in place uh, of the render in the initial blank state. Okay, so what we do, yeah, we edit this, and then here instead of like having the text, we just got this. It's a little bit clumped together. I would like to introduce more white space. It's uh, we are there. I click on that and we get that. Oh, 
we got some interaction. I love that. <laughs> Let's do that again. Oh, yeah, I can remove that. So I have to reload. It's there. It's also interesting to see how the how the tree is updated, right? So I what was that? What, why? Yeah. No, I don't want to inspect that. Thank you. Load repos. It changed immediately. It's there. Okay. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Hey guys. Uh, let's continue with that. Uh, so now we learned how to how to uh, handle actions. Again, I, I kind of don't like this is all handled in one component. I would like to separate this reducer logic and and the presentational or view logic. Uh, maybe there are other ways. Maybe this is just in the easiest way how to get into that. Uh, before we load data from JSON. We want to show a list of repos, not just a single. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. So we will have a list of them, and then we have to somehow iterate through it. Uh, it could be interesting. I would say that iteration is an important part in a language, and I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Reason has it done well. I'm thinking if it's done the same way uh, JavaScript has it. Do you mean you call methods on the array, or it's like uh, Elm when you have a method and the array is one of the arguments? Let's see. Okay. Uh, first, we change the state type here. Uh, okay. So what we did, we just wrapped that in array. So that, okay, there wasn't much. Let me try to save this and see the error message. It's there. I, I like that. That's so cool. Uh, I'm not sure if this is that useful because it has type array something, but something wanted. There's nothing, or is it like no? There's nothing. That's that's kind of. Oh, here it's okay. So the console just shows it wrong. It could be a it could be a bug or something. Okay, so here it shows. Us. That's cool. That's cool. That's what I wanted to see. Um, sorry, just testing. And the dummy data is now an array of two items. So let me change that. It, this file is becoming too long. Oh, a nice literature. I like that. So uh, it's an array and a pipe operator, and my Firo is putting it together into this. I'm not sure if I like that. <laughs> I never see that. I never see that. It's just so new. Okay, but we have that. Let's say that. We still had the problem there. I know about that. Uh, this is the thing we saw in the tutorial or in the, in the cheat sheet that this is how Reason writes. Uh, arrays and then we have reason react array to element wow okay oh yeah okay that is very interesting um uh, it's true that the liturgies i mean yeah so um we have a comment that the someone doesn't like the liturgies i to be honest, I'm not sure about this one either. I, I really like this one because it's nice and, and clean. And I really like the ones like uh, Triple Dot, which just looks better. And you know what it is. But with this one, I'm, I'm not sure, sure if I would remember if I, that it's actually this. It doesn't look like that, right? It, it looks weird. This is one thing that while learning new language comes... Uh, maybe I will get used to it. I don't know. Uh, okay, let me let me copy this and investigate. Uh, so I'm removing the whole render function. Uh, I did something wrong, right? I, I removed the... Where should this be? Oh yeah, it should be render, but it doesn't have the button. We remove the button? I don't know. Um, so what we do is we do render self. That's the, that's the state. If we have something, okay, now it's getting, uh, yeah, it's not very readable right now. I mean, like we are nested at like, I don't know how much, but let's go from the inside. And I can immediately see that it has two parts, right? This is the actual array, which I like. So that's the array we are transforming. This is the transformation function, which here is very easy. It just takes the repo and renders, uh, repo out them 
you have to have a key there, which is great. Uh, it's one of my most An article I wrote with the most views ever, and I wrote it like so long ago, and it was in this a little bit. Uh, the edit it wasn't that nice, and I was like writing that like you have to do that, and and people probably like that. It was like a little bit clickbait, but it worked. I'm I'm not sure if I'm proud about that. You have this function called array dot map. I really like that. It means you have a function, and then you pass the repos as a as an argument. Very cool. By the way, we have a. Trailing commas here. I'm not sure if it's like a. Oh yeah, I will not know that. Um, probably the formatter adds that. It can be useful. I, I'm, I'm. To be honest, I don't use it in JavaScript, but I'm getting used to that, and I, I think, I would like them to use, and that's the next thing I will do. But this is array of elements, and you need to turn it to, a, an element, and you use this function reason react to, array to element. Makes sense. Okay, kind of. Very explicit. Very explicit. Uh, if there's nothing, we just have a string, so we are removing that button we used to have there, and that's it. Uh, but it's still having some problems because. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Now the reducer is returning wrong data type. No. What? This has type. Okay. Uh, where is that? So, repo data. It's some loaded repo. We don't have like we call it. Oh what? Hmm. Oh yeah. Here we have to say that this function actually receives array. I mean we don't have it implemented, but that's what we need, right? Yeah, compiled successfully. We have that. Yeah. Uh. So, uh, Grace, what you're talking about is that if you have one function called map, it can, um, how is it called? It's polymorphic. It means it can accept objects or or arrays or things like collections. I'm not sure this is the case. I know that Haskell has that. It's some higher order something. As I said, I think it's called polymorph polymorphic uh, functions. But this array.map kind of tells me that this only works for arrays, if that's what you mean. And, and yeah, you are right. It would be super cool if you had this uh, high level function or whatever you want to call it called map and whatever you pass into that, it knows how to iterate, but I, I'm, I'm not sure this is the case. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, now, now we load some real data. That is cool. I was w uh, hoping for that. Before fetching out JSON, we need to install some extra dependencies. Okay, I can do that. So what do they do? Okay, let, let's, let me uh, run that so it's installed and let's read what they do. So buckle types BS fetch, revs the browser fetch API. Obvious, yeah, from the name. Uh, and buckle types BS JSON allows to turn JSON fetched from server into region records okay that's interesting that it's not included also this buckle thing um as i said reason is using i mean reason goes to ocaml or I, I mean this is kind of difficult in terminology because it's not technically going there's just a different syntax for the same thing whatever buckle script takes ocaml and produces javascript so i assume that anything that has to do with actually Talking to JavaScript or like doing JavaScript has to be done uh, through something that has buckle in its name. That makes sense. Uh, before we can use it, we need to add it to BS dependencies. By the way, everybody knows what BS means, right? That is not a good shortcut. Uh, abbreviate, yeah, what's it called? Yeah, uh, not good. But we have to edit and BS fetch and BS JSON. Let me, let me copy that. So there should be a file called bs oh, bs config. We have bs dependencies. Yeah, we add these two. It's a JSON, so there are no comments. Yeah, exactly. Bs. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Oh, and now my printer reformatted that. Oh yeah, that happens. Oh, I can write. I'm, I'm not sure what it means. React. Uh, 
reformat free. Okay, I don't know, whatever. I'm, I'm skipping that now, right now. So we have that. And we then can start it again. Interesting part is that this thing catched up. That's nice. That's really cool. Where are these? Uh, okay, package not. What? I'm not sure if I was supposed to call it already. I, I probably was, right? I'm not using that. Resol okay. Oh, it, oh, I, I did something wrong. I didn't write a comma or no. Let me go back with this. Oh, I can't do go back. Uh, package BS JSON not found or built. It is not built. Please run BSB make world. Um, we we don't have anything about it here, do we? Just says you need to kill and restart your yarn start command. That is. Also, he names it dot bs config. I have bs dot json. I assume it's the same. It kind of adds up. Okay, let let's write bsb make world. Okay, that's kind of a nice line. Oh no, I can't. Um, well, um, do I miss something here? Uh, let me go through it again. Run this. We did that. We definitely did that. Buckle types BS JSON. In the BS appendage section, add BS fetch and BS JSON. Yeah, we, we definitely did that. Reason script sources SRC. File BS config the JSON line one. Is it this prettier thing? Was it did prettier do something with that? Can I? Oh, I can't. Could, could it be? That doesn't make much sense, does it? Uh, it it just doesn't make sense. I'm I'm, I'm sorry, it doesn't. Uh, this page isn't working, and now it. Oh, Jason5 is complaining about this? This is a valid... Oh, are you complaining because these are differently spaced? Oh, man. That is definitely not required by from a Jason. Uh, yeah, watch out on this Z. Thank you. That's uh, That's a nice one. <clears throat> um, something tells me that could be it. Okay, now it's now it's actually complaining about something that makes sense. BS JSON not found or built. Oh, or could it be that? So now I have to run this. It's still com. Hmm. 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 Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to run that command. Did I run it wrong or? BSB make world. <laughs> uh, did I? <sighs> did I run those yarn commands? Uh, that are right, right? Did it, did it finish? Okay, linking packages, yeah, cool, please do that. It did install BS fetch, BS fetch. Okay, where's the BS JSON? Let's read it like this. It, it should work, right? It's actually doing something else, isn't it? Okay, I, I guess this is it. That was the problem. 
kind of weird. I thought, why, why could, wouldn't you be able to add two packages at once? Okay, still the same problem. Um, hey, Martin. Uh, welcome. I mean, we, we, we start working with this tutorial just to quickly wrap up. Uh, wrap up. Uh, um, repeat. Uh, and now we got stuck with installing these BS dependencies and it seems that the BS right now is accurate because it doesn't work. Uh, I did probe something with my, with my config, but it seems to be a valid JSON. Package BS JSON is not found. Please run this command. This is what I run right now. Okay, what happens if I, if I, for some reason, just remove it from there? I, I do this. You have to tell me that the BS fetch works. That sure is very, very difficult to understand what's happening. Oh yeah, closure script. I, I did look into that, but I couldn't bear with all the uh, parentheses. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Uh, so Martin wrote that the BS JSON repo says that it was somehow moved and we have to use something else. Yeah. Uh, was moved to Glenn BS JSON. Okay. Do we have any? Okay. Yeah. So we have to do this. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And that's it. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm, I wouldn't be able to come up with that. Thank you very much. Let's write this guy later. I hope it works the same time. <laughs> okay, we have that. We are here. Uh, and yeah, we have, we have things running. We have some warnings. We didn't have those, right? Uh, oh, there's something deprecated JS undefined from opt used from option instead. Do, do, do I use that or it's it's always just in BS just okay, so it's even like a old one, old version of something. I don't okay, no, uh, not right now. I, I'm glad that this works. So, what we have, I think that we have uh type repo we have and we define a new function parse repo json okay parsing can be done oh sorry done fun i'm going to say fun oh my god 8 pn is probably it so what you do here is that you have a function you receive a json which is json.t not sure what is dot t uh then you receive a repo. Oh no, sorry, it returns a repo. Yes, confusing. It returns a, a type repo. And it's a full name, JSON decalled field, full name, as a string. Ah, okay, so this is the data. So it means take this G JSON, take this field, and interpret it as a, as a string. Yeah, that's, that's kind of common. I, I'm not sure what is type.t means but I, I actually don't care that much. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, don't repeat yourself. Okay, it does It does uh, look a bit wordy. Oh, you can do this open json.decode and then you don't have to write all these things. So it's like a present in the document. You do this and, I, and then you can remove this, this, this. Yeah, it's very common. I was looking for that. Can I do that with the reason uh, react? I'm pretty sure I can, but uh, that would help a lot. Yeah, uh, that doesn't do anything. Let's go next. Uh, yeah, that's what we just did. I could have copied that. Okay. So in app, we say that the dummy repo. Okay, okay, I see that. We will use this uh, parse repo JSON function 
and we will do it here in the dummy repos. Again, if you are confused, can you come later? This is a literature. We were talking about that, if you liked it or not, but we have that. So what we do is we use this function. We have this, I don't know, JS, JSON, parse, EXN, external. Um, oh, and this is a syntax how you can inline JavaScript. That's, that's interesting. It says wrong formatting. Oh, because it's missing the commas. Uh, that's it. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, we 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 didn't do anything right now, right? Because we didn't we removed the function, the button. We removed the button. We shouldn't have removed the button. I think the button should be there. Let's let's put it back. Otherwise, we can't actually see anything. Let's copy that. Uh, where was that? Uh, yeah, load repos button and let me see if i remember it right i can revive here uh, and here i have some problem with the dummy repo we don't have because it's called dummy repos okay it's there uh let's see there we now we have the button i can click on that and it's there i love that i love that um however this only works for a for a for a simple object why right? we need it for for arrays and for nested objects that's probably what we will do uh we are coming close to the end that's cool uh we have this we have this fetching the data yeah cool i'm still a little bit confused because this should like parse just one object but we need to do it in a in an array we will oh okay haha <laughs> it's there they thought about that. Um, so we have this function, okay. This is a simple in a repo data, yeah. This is a simple bar repo JSON, yeah. Uh, we don't have to use this JSON decode as we saw above. It should work. We just run this function on this array with this yeah we take items from the json take it as an array and on each item we run this function kind of straightforward i like that uh and now we will be able to use bs fetch and um, before that more syntax okay and we have the pipe operator that's cool uh pipe operator uh it soon will be in javascript hopefully that's a nice proposal for that i love that i would love to see that uh by the way this is this will be another, another literature in my in my font but we can see that so what it basically does is that instead of like nesting functions like these you can take the argument put it to this function as the first argument take the result put it here take the result of this put it here super cool like pipe in in uh in shell and it makes things much more readable and yeah it, it works very much uh, like then if that's what we're talking about if you have promised that then this is very similar like you pass things one to each other um in repository okay so this is kind of like the model right the repo data and we have all the transformation there as well and and parsing i'm not sure if, if that's how i would structure the application uh, but maybe this is just for a demo. Uh, so this is some URL. I hope it will work. I had some problems recently because AP, uh, because uh, GitHub API has some IP limits. And if I'm in a building like this and there can be people, yeah, we will see. Um, very cool, fetch repos. We have bsfetch.fetch on this URL. And this is this is the literature again don't be confused this nice uh triangle is just a pipe operator take this and the result will go to js promise then underscore i don't know why is that underscore it doesn't look that good uh you do another Yes, fetch response of text. Oh, okay. So you, this is kind of transforms that to text, I assume. 
And then what you get is the JSON text and you do JS promise resolve parse. Yeah, you run this function. Well, yeah, we've seen this one parse X, I would say it's parse external. Oh, I cannot get it. Okay, so this means the JSON text is similar to this. It's like a text, like a like a string, I assume. This parse external is kind of will take the text. Oh, it's like a JSON parse. Okay, makes sense. Like from a string. Yeah, okay. I don't know why I was confused. I'm not sure why we introduce these JS promises. Is it because the fetch actually returns a promise and we have to do it here? I would say that the wrapper could be could be different, but yeah, okay, we have that. um yeah okay we have that uh okay yeah we can open js promise if we want we don't have to do that we can do that we will understand that yeah uh what is writing that open json decode can be confusing uh yeah i i totally agree i'm i'm not sure about about that i mean when i when i would be reading this like this and i don't okay when i would add some i don't know a few few more um, open lines so i don't see the top and i'm reading this and i see this string i would have no idea where it comes from i would have no idea where it comes in this array where this come where does it come from no idea it's it's confusing that's just saying uh yeah but so that's i mean let's not just do it with the js js promise uh, so we are very explicit what has happening and we like at least for this beginning know what what we do um yeah so let's skip this step finally back in app re we'll add some code to load the data and store it in component state okay uh <laughs> i don't want to copy that i want to see what what actually changed so i think we have this we have this we have this we have this oh this mount is new interesting interesting so I, I, I would say that this may be the only thing that's new. Oh, and then we can not have the, yeah. Uh, and then the reducer is new, now it's the same. Okay, I would say it's just the did mount is new. So we, it's a, it's a, how's it called? A lifecycle function, so you do, you get self, that's interesting uh handle repos loaded uh, is self dot reduce reduce repo data loaded repo data okay I i'm not sure how the self reduce works because this is a function right it kind of takes repo data and wraps it in loaded Yeah, exactly, Martin. I, I exactly, I, I agree. In Elm, you can import things and, and name them, right? So you kind of change it. You change the prefix, but it's not like magical. I'm I'm confused. And you you have you have repo data fetch repos. Okay, I understand that. Then you take it. You have to write this just promise. Then I definitely not like this. But whatever. Uh, maybe there's other ways. Is there is there like a async? Or not, uh, where I would, what do I want? Where am I right now? I want this, um, it right. And I want to say, okay, it doesn't say anything about async functions. <sighs> it's, this is so ugly and it's so long, but I take this, I take the repo data. I run this function on these data. Um, uh, and I resolve this promise. I'm not sure what ignore is, and I do re reason react no update. I have no idea why, why is it written like this. This is so confusing. Uh, the self reduce. I mean, it takes the data, it wraps it to this action. In in Elm, you would kind of write it like okay, I will try it because this is weird. Like, uh, I like point free programming. This is kind of weird. I'm not sure. Okay, it doesn't work. You have to do that. That's that's so verbose. That is so verbose. You just basically just wrap it into correct, uh, correct action, right? And then this action is here understood. Ah, okay. Uh, but we are here. 
it works we got uh we got a list of those uh is there something left in the yeah we can add some css i guess we all can do that or we can use inline styles using react dom re dot style make who yeah uh completed app is here i'm not sure if we have yeah it's, it's basically the same it just is some uh, body style so we have that uh uh i'm not sure what you mean you say uh grace that it can't distinguish between loaded meaning the function or the function call I i'm not sure i understand that I mean, I mean, yeah, it's probably something like that. I mean, again, I was using something I was used to from from uh, Elm, where you have a union type uh, defined here, and then you have some arguments. You can kind of use it as a function, uh, but maybe it doesn't relate. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like uh, this all self dot reduce. It, again, I mean, it's a, it's a, it needs to have another argument, right? That so I, this returns a function that, when run with this data, it does this transformation of adding the uh, action, and then somehow runs this reducer. What I don't understand is that why you have this no update here as a return of this uh, did mount. Like, can you have side effects or updates getting from the did mount? That would be super bad. Uh, I hope not. And and I, I, I okay, this this has to somehow be like a how's it called? Like a dispatch function, right? Running on run on this specific instance on this on this component. Yeah. Okay. And I definitely don't like having this JavaScript promise uh, API popping here. I'm pretty sure because nobody wants to write it like that. I'm pretty sure there would be a, a library or something that would do this better. Like with some icing. I mean, it has to have icing. Let's, let's just quickly search for that because. Uh, what's buckle script async story? Yeah. Uh, you. You can use JS promise. Yeah, nobody wants to do that. Uh, we have a native or common sign. We have LTV and async. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems to be what I'm looking for. Uh, okay, too long. But we we have this. Wow, that looks very Java. <laughs> okay, so this is some some reference documentation to to async. Okay, there's nothing like that. That's that's a little bit disappointing to be honest. That is that is actually very disappointing. Like writing all this JS promise then underscore. What does it have the underscore? It's, does it have more? Does it have like other functions as well? Um, yeah, it only ha it has catch and then it has then underscore. Oh, is it because then is part? Oh, it's because if then right. That's that's definitely it. <laughs> yeah. No. What? So is that? I thought that then could be a a reserve keyword, but it doesn't seem so. Yeah. Okay. This is something I would like to see. I would like to see why there's an underscore in that. That's not very nice. Otherwise, I like to wrap it up. I, I did like that. I like the language. It it takes the good parts of JavaScript, meaning like I can read it. I mean, sure, I, I do know the functional programming, but I am sure I would be able to to read it. And I know what's happening. Uh, it's very similar to that. Uh, I also like. Um, 
that it's functional to a certain level because I, I wasn't sure about like having this component uh this reducer component that is like the only thing I, i'm not sure i like uh i'm i would have to investigate more because this did mount functionality with these no updates and this reduce that's that seems like a like a magic oh we do it here as well okay so this reduces basically this patch if if i will think of that like that i can live with that it makes sense but still not sure i liked it this js promise then underscore oh man uh i i would need to get rid of that uh yeah, that Twitch doesn't do multiple uh, multi-line comments. Okay, I, I can I can look into that. Uh, I can find it somewhere. We're looking at the what is the? I can okay, um, how to use uh, self reduce. What what what, I, what is the annotation? Um, hmm. I would hope that this is somehow Yeah, why do they call it reduce? That's a good question. That's a good question. I uh, Is it possible to get a good documentation? State actions and reducers. Uh where did you find the reducer? Oh. Uh sorry, reduce um type. I'm pretty sure you can you can paste uh, URLs into the chat. Uh, re, uh, okay. If you ever see mentions of self-reduce, this is the old API. The new API is called self.send. Okay. <laughs> wow, this language is moving fast. Uh, Um, I'm not reduce, reduce. Where is that? I want some documentation, some annotation. Uh, reduce takes a callback, passing it the event, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, gives you an asking for an action. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I still don't see a good type annotation for the reduce. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why we're using this old version. I'm not sure how, how new is this self sent. Um, we send, yeah, send makes more sense. I would say yeah, dispatch send, I would say that's kind of good. Uh, let me quickly check if it actually works with that no no well yeah probably doesn't work uh so we would have to upgrade something uh where was i oh yeah i was, I was looking at what things i i liked uh what i i i'm, I'm not get I, I didn't get used to how it looks you know when i look at this code it doesn't feel that elegant as elm does it seems a little bit cluttered and, and just compressed together uh, and it seems that the standard formator is removing the new lines which I would say would make it much more readable and I don't want to do some I'm not even oh that's a good one how do I make uh, comments in a uh, reason yeah but that's that's more questions like that and I uh, I would like to discuss them uh, later and I will look at these examples. Uh, I will. I would like to go more. As I said, my ultimate goal is to create the the hangman I did create in Elm the other day when I was learning it. This is the game I want to uh, try. I would say I, I have all the information I need right now. So I would say the next time, the next streaming, I will be implementing hangman in Reason. Since that, thank you very much for joining. If you have questions, please uh, let me know. Uh, let me uh, write some comments. I, I really appreciate that. 
Uh, if you didn't like something, let me know as well. If you liked it, uh, share it with your friends as always. Like, isn't that what every restaurant says? I'm not a restaurant though. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much. And hope to see you next time. Goodbye, guys.